sister. Oh, oh. Avery. Oh, okay. Okay. Happy birthday. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. She's the only one who gets to uh, have a birthday announced when we are alive. <laughs> That's not fair. My birthday was announced live. <laughs> That's how special you are. <laughs> oh, hallelujah to Jesus. Okay, so let's say hallelujah. hallelujah. Okay. We thank God for this day. We are still in the year of our Lord 2021. And this is, we are in the month of September. And today is the 5th. In case somebody forgot about that. All right, and... Uh, I came to leave the years. Wow. When we started with all the issues about the run of it, and lo and behold, the year is almost ended. Wow. Anyway, we bless God for His preservation, His protection, His covering over our lives. Hallelujah. We thank Him for bringing us uh, this far. All right, so. We welcome viewers across uh, the nations, this Liberty House International Church, coming to you live all the way from the USA via Facebook and YouTube. In case you miss any portion of this broadcast, please go to our webpage, libertyhouseusa.org. Once again, libertyhouseusa.org. Or go to our YouTube channel and make sure you type in our full name, Liberty House International Church, because there are other Liberty Houses out there. So, we are the only genuine, authentic Liberty House International Church. <laughs> oh, dear Lord, hallelujah. Do I talk too much? No. Okay, all right. I don't like people who are tight anyway. <laughs> hallelujah. So, well, our messenger of the Lord Jesus Christ, an agent of change and transformation, coming to you with the message of transformation because God is a God who always keeps transforming us from glory to glory, from faith to faith, and from strength to strength. Amen. So when he speaks to us, he speaks from a place of what? Transformation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So for um, those who will be hearing me for the first time, or those who have been listening to me, and you don't like my delivery, please keep praying for me. My delivery may not be on point, it may not be the way you like it, but um, just don't focus on that. Focus on the truth that is coming through me. The words that I speak are not mine. They are the words of uh, life. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, my job here, my mission is to push you forward to advance uh, your course in your relationship with the Lord. I'm not against you. I'm not your enemy. So if I say anything foreign or anything that robs you, you know, wrongly, please don't be offended. That's not my intent. Hallelujah. Amen. And please don't fight me too. If you disagree with what I'm saying, just check what I'm saying in the light of the Word of God. If it's truth, then please, I'm begging you, pleading with you, swallow your pride, take it, adjust, and then move on with your life. And the church said, Amen. Thank you. Paul said in the book of Galatians, said, Have I now become your enemy because I tell you truth? So at times that's what it is. Some people don't like the fact that you're telling them truth. Okay. Let me see if I can do this and do it well. How many people listen to Fridays? Fridays. Wow. So the rest of you, if the rapture had taken place. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'm going to give you a word of advice, counsel. And, and take it in good faith. I realize that we make time for almost everything. If you agree, say amen. amen. So I know, yes, I'm saying the truth. I'll say that again. We make time for almost everything in life. Two of us. Especially the things that we want to do, we like, we desire to do, we make time for those things, right? Okay. So if we can spend three hours, and I would say maybe three hours, when you come here, it's not three hours. Sunday is not three hours. Two or what? From 10, 10, 10, 10, 15 to 2.45. Tell me, two hours? 12.45. 12.45. So 10, from 10.15 10, to? Two hours and 45 minutes. It's three hours. Oh. 10.15. <laughs> you guys, where do you go to school? 
<laughs> this is simple math. From 10.15 to what? 12.15. How many hours? 10.15 to 12.15. Two hours. So our closing time is 12.45. So I've had what? 30 minutes to wait. So you see it's at three hours. It's two and a half hours. Some don't even show up till it's 11. And yet they want to go home when it's 12 30. I've started preaching. I've started preaching. I've started preaching today. I'm preaching. Today is going to be different. And yet, some of them, they don't wait till leaving their 12 45 is over. They're out of the door. I have a problem with you. You don't have a problem, but I have a problem with you. Because it bothers me that you can't give God time. You don't show up in any midweek service. I'm not just talking to you, I'm talking to the whole world because you are not the only one doing that. You don't have any midweek service. Blame it on coronavirus. Now online. Is the order of the day. Online, you don't even do it well. Because you are doing dishes, you are cooking, and you say you are listening. You are not listening to anything. You say you are praying. Is that, is that how you pray? If God deals with you that way, are you going to like it? You are going to, you are going to hold him by his neck and say, God, sit down. I want your attention. Alright? But this is what we are doing. Is it fair? Is it fair? So what do we have to change? What do I have to do? What do we have to do? Change. Do better. Change and do better. Amen. Me, God is my source. He's my everything. So I don't play with him. She will tell you, she's lived with me. I'm talking to our, my wife. She's lived with me for all these years. I don't do that prayer thing like, oh, I said, no, I didn't pray. Oh, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Father, you know what I'm I'm going out of the door, blah, blah, blah. If I don't have time for God, then I don't have time for anything. He should be first. He should be first. So if you don't throughout the week, you don't participate in any midweek service, and only Sunday, two and a half hours, some people go to movies. Then when they don't go, they have the television, they bought it, right? They can watch Netflix, whatever, movie after movie, Hulu, and what, what, tell me the other, YouTube. Do one movie after another, and then <laughs> look at it now. It's not so funny. I can't believe it. At the end of the day, when you are faced with troubles, the Hulu, the Netflix, the YouTube, what you are watching, they can't help you. This is for life. So let's take it serious. I know some people have to work, so that I understand. Or at times you have an uh, engagement, so you may leave before service is over. I understand. But if that's not your case and you keep doing that, what kind of Christian are you? Don't take any guilt trip. I'm just rebuking you. And as a father, it's my place to rebuke you. It's my place to correct you. So don't be all up there. Don't sit on your high horse. Please, repent. Can I go on with our message? Okay, one more thing that I... As you ask for me. <laughs> uh, when you go today, I know you have your agenda. Okay, let me see by hands those who have a planner, those who have planned out what they are going to do after service. Let me see by hands. Show of hands. Oh, the rest of you didn't plan anything. Okay, so I'm going to invite all of you into my house. If you don't have any plans, I'm inviting. <laughs> Isn't that okay? You know, you, you are not going away. How many people are going to go to work after this? Okay, the rest, you are not. And you don't have anything planned apart from going to eat your food. Uh, <laughs> I'm just messing with you, don't mind me. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I like to have fun. Hallelujah. Okay, so when you go back, please make it a point to listen to Fridays. You see, the word of God is said is precept upon precept, line upon line, a little here, a little there. So Jesus walked even with the disciples for some number of years. He didn't teach them everything in one day. 
He taught them bit by bit. So that's the same thing I'm doing. So we are adding on to, you went to, uh, what? You started learning what? The alphabets, A, B, C, D. Then a continuum. You put letters together, you know, like G-O, go, C-O-M-E, come. You know, then we went to constructing what? Sentences and all that. You see, every day we are adding onto it. Why do you have the easy? I feel it so, because it's right or about me. What number is that? Okay, are you guys all right? Okay, okay. They are all right, so let's leave that alone. <laughs> Somebody said for now, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he just finished praising God. They need the AC to uh, cool down. Okay. <laughs> when it's too much, please let me know. I mean, you can talk to them at the back, so they will work it out. All right. So please make a point to go listen because I'm adding on to stuff. I'm adding on to stuff. And I'm going to say this it's no put down for some pastors. I'm teaching you stuff that some pastors have struggled with. Though they are leaders, they taught some of these things and they have realized that it's wrong. When I started talking to them about some of these things, they tried to argue. But later on, they have come to realize that what I'm sharing with them is present truth. So they have adjusted. If the leader doesn't have revelation, or let me say it this way. The leader leads by his mindset. So you can't rise above his mindset. What he knows is what he gives you. So if he's not going forward, you're not going to go forward. If he's full of traditions and religious gymnastics and he's teaching that, that's what you're going to know. And that's what I've come to find out in the body of Christ. And that is not okay. So today, I'm going to share some something with you i want to talk to you about the holy spirit i know a lot of folks don't know anything about the holy spirit you know why i'll start by saying that some people pray now they say father i'm asking you to order my steps have you prayed that before have you heard somebody pray like that before who still prays like that own it be bold be bold okay thank you for your sincerity you so you were waiting for others to own it before you see now okay i know some people do they say father i'm asking you to order my steps okay you don't say order my steps how many people say father i'm asking you to show me the way how many people aha uh -huh. okay okay and how many people say father i'm asking you to direct me to lead me okay direct me lead me all right, so that's what we want to talk about today. You see, this thing is uh, causing problems. So Friday, I titled this uh, message, what? Stop chasing prophets. Because this is why some people go to see prophets. Because they believe that they have the way, they have the guidance, they have the steps that we have to take. So if we can just go to them, then they will tell us, and then end of case. Prophets have their place. All right, and I said that on Friday. I don't want to go into that much. I'm also a prophet of God. I am. I've functioned in this office for years now. And like I said on Friday, I'm going to sound like a broken record. Let me say that. I prophesy to people concerning their destinies, their purpose, their callings, their ministries, their giftings, their graces. I prophesy people out of uh, bondage into liberty. I prophesy to people things that have happened, things that are going to take place, and whatever you've seen it. I prophesy people from uh, what you call it, sickness into healing. I've, I've functioned in the area of uh, what deliverance for years. When I started deliverance, I was just pushing to it in the year '88, and I've been at it regularly. Okay, but I've advanced in knowledge, so I don't chase demons anymore. I don't hold demons. You see some people, they say they are casting out uh, demons, and then the demon, the person is fighting with them, and the people, six people are holding them. I don't do that anymore. When I say go, you have to go. 
when the demon is manifested, it's all over the place. I don't hold that person. People have been here, they've seen it. I'll say to the person, stand. Because it's a demon, he has to obey me. I have authority over the demon. So when I say stop it, they listen, they stop. But I, I'm talking to you about something that I came to see. Where, you know, you have these people, and then they say, hold him. At times they even chain the person. Because he can't stand the violence. And then at times they poke the person. No, the person is not a demon. The demon is manifesting through. So if you are not, if you have, if you don't handle the person with uh, dignity, with respect, you are going to hurt the person. It's a demon that you are coming after. So some of these things that have been on the scene for a long time, they are not biblical. Jesus did not handle demons that way. The apostles that he trained didn't handle demons that were deliverance that way. So I'm talking about something that is in a book. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about something that is in the book. The early church, what they practice. That is what I practice. The power in you is, is higher. The authority in you is higher than the devil himself. So every demon under him, spirit under him, must bow to you. But if you don't know it, you see, it's not a formula. One, two, three steps. First, lift up your hands. And then spin around. And then say, ah. And then the demon is out. No, that's not how it works. Hallelujah. It's about your relationship with God. It's about knowing the authority that you have been given over demons. God gave you that authority over demons. You have to know that. The, the, the disciples didn't know that. So when you read Luke chapter 10, they went out. When they were sent, the first time they encountered with demons. Then they came back rejoicing. They said, oh Lord, even the demons were subject to us. They said, no, don't rejoice about that. That, that is uh, class one. That is first grade. Class one. First grade. That is just the beginning. It's nothing. Hallelujah. He said, no, rejoice rather that your names are written in the book of life. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're a believer, demons are subject to you. You shouldn't be afraid of them. But the average leader, spiritual leader, doesn't teach these things. So believers don't know that. Some ministers themselves are afraid of demons. They are afraid of, uh, when you say witchcraft, uh-uh, don't go there with them. They are afraid. I know what I'm talking about. I know where I'm coming from. Hallelujah. Amen. But if you hear truth, and especially from the Lord, let me, for studies, please put the um, Second Peter chapter 3. Let me start from there. Second Peter 3, 18. Hallelujah. Amen. So, you have to, you have to know present truth. Alright? No, no, no. I think I goofed. Let's go back to um, Romans 6, verse 14. Romans 6, 14. I think I'm losing with, which is good. <laughs> I, I, want, I want my tummy, you know, to go, so that's fine. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on now, you start the joke. Let's read. It. <laughs> you guys joke too much. <laughs> okay, let's read. We are in Romans chapter four, verse fourteen. Read. For sin shall not have what dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but what under grace. So first thing I want to tell you is, it says sin shall not have dominion over you. You have to teach every believer this. Sin does not have dominion over you. Why? Because he took us. He delivered us from the kingdom of darkness where Satan was in charge. According to Colossians chapter 1. And he has brought us into what? His own kingdom. And where we are, he is in charge. He is the boss. Satan has no authority over us anymore. He ransomed us. He ransomed us. Meaning he paid the price. That's ransom. He paid redemption what? Price. The atonement. So he took us. I want to say this clearly. You have to listen to Fridays. It will help you because I talk uh, so much about some of this. You see, when he entered, let me, let me go there. Colossians 1. Let them see it. 
13 for those who haven't seen it before. When he went there to deliver us, he didn't have like half of the price. You know what I'm saying? When you go to the store to buy something, you pay the full price. Right? What what is the item is being sold for? Okay? It's only uh, in some places that they negotiate with you that you can have a payment plan, whatever, or all that. But still you pay the full kind of price. So, okay, in the case of Jesus, let's read this. It says, he has delivered us, not going to deliver us, he has delivered us from what? The power of darkness. Who is the power of the darkness? The devil. Because John 8, 44, it says you are of your father, the devil, and that his desires you want to do. He doesn't abide in truth. He walks in darkness all the all And uh, uh, Second uh, Corinthians 6 says, light, light has no fellowship with darkness. All right? He's delivered us and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. So we are in a different kingdom. So when he went there to deliver us, to ransom us, he paid the full price. What was the price? His life. His life. He paid the full price. So it wasn't like, so he delivered you. And then he said, oh, this deliverance now is just about your forgiveness of sins. Next time I'm going to go to the devil's camp and then go and pay for your what? Health or healing. Do you know what I'm saying? No. The whole thing it was a package. When he delivered us, he delivered us completely, Amen. totally. Amen. Satan doesn't have anything against us. Hallelujah. Doesn't have any hold on our lives. Amen. There's nothing that he can say that, okay, Jesus, you didn't finish the transaction. No, there's the balance that you have to take care of. No, there's no balance. Now, I want you to understand this because it's important. Because some people teach and say that even though you are born again, something from your father's line or generationally and uh, what, uh, whatever, whatever, your bloodline biologically is affecting you and all that. I define opinion. Now, I've made some of these mistakes before because I was teaching what I came to meet that people were teaching. You know what I'm saying? So if you hear somebody telling you this is wrong. Salvation includes breaking everything that is generational. Everything from the blood, natural bloodline, salvation includes breaking that thing. You are exempt. Somebody has to just tell you that. I'm telling you, I started doing deliverance 88. And then I didn't know that it was even deliverance. I just be leading praise and worship and demons. People will begin to manifest. They fall down the right like a snake. Some scream and what I do, they jump around. And that's how I was thrust into deliverance ministry. Over the years, I learned. I believe from books. I, I won't lie to you. I, I've read uh, something from the Prince. He's uh, with the Lord. He's one of the respected kind of uh, teachers and uh, apostles. You know, that uh, the land has seen. Derrick Prince. Derrick Prince, if you heard the name before. I use this material, whatever. I use some of the things, approach and whatever. So that's how I learned. Okay? And I started doing these things. Then it came to a time, as I was doing these things, oh, let me leave that alone. I don't like talking about myself, you know, because I don't, I don't want it to feel like I'm trying to brag. So let me leave this alone. But what I'm trying to say is, I've, gra I've graduated, I've advanced. All right, I've increased in knowledge and maturity where deliverance is concerned, and I'm very sharp detecting and uh, recognizing the presence of uh, spirits. I'm walking that. I can write a book on it. I can teach you detail, detail. I've seen this over and over and over. It used to get me into trouble because people will be saying A, and I'll say it's not A, it's zero. Then they say, "What makes you say that?" I said the Lord told me. Then they get then I'll be in trouble. In no time, then it will manifest. Then they realize, oh, okay, so really the Lord told. Me. I remember one pastor said, if you don't withdraw what he has said, then when the prophesy, I'm not going to take it anymore. I said, I'm not withdrawing anything. You don't take it when I prophesy, that's your cup of tea. And lo and behold, in no time, your senior pastor was begging me to pull my words. Because God used me to expose the guy's heart. His motives were wrong. He was digging, 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 undermining the head pastor and rallying leaders around him. 
And God used me to expose him in a pastor's meeting. I spoke and I said it. He didn't like it. In no time, it happened. And then these leaders, homes are leaders, they themselves, they confess everything. He kept, if he was even destroying me and another associate pastor around, he was destroying us to others in the congregation, saying that we gang up against him and all that, which was false. And then I saw it live, like after service, like in this setting, the senior pastor had a, a meeting with this guy. And come and see the disrespect from this the so-called angel that people thought he was. I can tell you stories. Hallelujah. I mean, people who walk in saying, I don't even have to see you. I, can, I talk to people on their phone. I know what is going on. You come to me for counseling. You mention, you talk about whatever. And right away, the Holy Spirit tells me what's going on. And I'll say 99.9% .9 of the time, I've been right. I'm telling you about maturity. You grow in this. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. So certain things I do may seem easy, but I've been here for a long, long time. And I've made my mistakes. Not many do. One pastor that I prophesied to, I was told that he, he, he doesn't like the spirit with which I prophesied. I didn't do any wrong. This is something I think of. Okay, let me leave the detail alone so I don't get in trouble. But I wrote down the prophecy as the Lord spoke to me from my house. And I went to his house, written, and I read it, and I gave him a copy. That's it. What did I do wrong? But I was told, don't mind him. What he prophesied about, that's what he's doing now. But you know why? Because I prophesied to him his ministry. He's trying to do something that he has no business doing. And I prophesied to him what he should be doing. And it's like, who are you? You know, to prophesy, that, prophesy this to me. People forget that God even used a donkey to speak to a prophet. Right. Naaman would have remained a leper if his servant had not convinced him to humble himself. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. See, when it comes to the prophetic things or the Holy Spirit using people, every believer is a qualified candidate. God can use anybody to be a blessing to you. Hallelujah. Amen. So what was I talking about before I got out here? Huh? Deliverance. Okay, I'll leave that alone because it will take my time. I'll tell you this one. I used to have it, I was an associate in the church, I used to have it uh, every Tuesday. One of the ladies that came to me, they were coming from other churches. And her job was sleeping around with the ministers in the place. And that's her job. Look, I've seen all kinds of things. I can tell you stories of from stories. I can tell you how God has used me. When it comes to healing, deliverance, whatever, I can tell you stories. And what I love, when I started, I didn't know much. But when I started, and I was seeing that, wow. I just don't speak at times. And then there's a manifestation. I say, wow, I'm powerful. Wow, so this thing is real. The power of God. <laughs> I'm telling you what happened to me years ago. You see, so over the years, my confidence has been building up. Right. Seeing this, having these experiences and seeing these things. Yeah. I remember one of the first times, uh, what's the name? Elder Ricky. We had a, 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 what you call, a demonstration here. And then he said it. He said, wow. Look at the way, you know, these people were manifesting the demons. The pastor would just Instruct them, order them, and then it stops. Look, the power is not mine. It's God's power. Amen. But I've learned how to work with the power. Amen. That's, right. That's the difference. Amen. I've learned how to yield myself as a vessel. Yeah. Amen. And that is what I want people to learn. Amen. I remember when I used to have miracle service every Friday. People were coming from other churches. And one of the incidents... Somebody brought it came from another church. He said, no, pastors, they push people down. And it's true. Some pastors, they push people down. You watch some of these. The way they lay hands, they push you. They spin you. No, that's fake. And you falling down doesn't mean that the person is anointed. It's God who chooses who falls down. Or whatever happens to the person. So you don't go and then, I want people to fall so they'll know I'm anointed. 
In fact, if that is what you have to start with, you are immature. So, you know, this guy came around and I was going to lay hands. And then the Holy Spirit told me, don't do it. So I stood like I'm talking to you and I prayed for the person in the name of Jesus concerning healing. The person went down like a tree that is uprooted, fell down. She came back up, she said, I want to say something. I didn't even ask anybody, she said, I want to say something. Then she said, well, now, I came here, I was a bit skeptical. Because, you know, this thing that people are doing, they say, you know, I, I think uh, some of our members were talking about what is going on. So, I mean, this thing that people do, they are pushing. So, I came here to see for myself. So, now I know it's real. I've seen people at times, the way they are rooted, they jump up. <laughs> I don't know why Holy Ghost does that. I don't, I don't say do it. I don't know how it, I have no clue that it's going to happen whatsoever. I don't know. But it happens. Hallelujah. That doesn't mean that you are anointed. You see, and we can talk about the different fallings and why we think based on what experience we've had, why people fall the way they fall. But you have to have training before you can tell these things. Hallelujah. Amen. So I've come in my long way. All right? And what I've been doing for some time is teaching these things, teaching people to do the same. Because first I thought I was so special. I'm the only one that can do that. But then God gave me a revelation that no, you have to reproduce after your kind. So what you are doing, you can train people to do the same by faith. And I started. Because years ago, what I hear is everybody passes to say, oh, you go and try it. What I'm doing because I'm called and I'm anointed. You go and try it, you see. That's a lie. Every believer, <laughs> every believer is anointed. To some extent, you can heal the sick, cast out demons. It's there in the Bible. So don't, don't let what they say fool you. They are trying to make themselves important. They are trying to... Uh, let you depend on them instead of depending on God. That's it. He delivered us. So, I used to teach this. Oh God, you are so merciful. I used to teach it. I'll take you from the book of Exodus. You know, and says that um, oh, oh, I'm talk, I was talking about the iniquities. God punishes the father. Uh, the iniquities of the father upon the second and the third generation, that kind of thing. So when we are teaching people, this is what we say. Because you didn't do any sin. But because of your forefathers did this, that's why you need deliverance. And there's this going on in your life. That is why. Because he's punishing whatever, whatever, whatever. Let me tell you. Old Testament. Read that same chapter. In fact, let's have this because I'm teaching to show you that. I'm forgetting about the Romans. When they read uh, Exodus, uh, was it 34? That God punishes the iniquity of the fathers. Somebody check it out for me. Punishes the iniquity of the fathers from the third to the what? Uh, second generation. But really too, his mercies go on to what? A thousand generations. Let's have that day. And I want to be sure that I have the right thing. Has anybody found it? Exodus. Anybody there? Nobody's Googling that for me. Nobody's trying that. Okay, let me see if I can find this myself. You, you, a scholastic, is that, is that a word like that? Deuteronomy 5.9. Deuteronomy 5, 5.9? Oh, there's one in Exodus. Okay, let's put the Deuteronomy 5.9 there. Let's see. There's one in Exodus, too. We used to teach these things. We're putting people in bondage. That's Old Testament. When Jesus died. Okay. So we are saying, Deuteronomy 5 9 says, What? Well, you shall not bow down to, uh, to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God. I used to teach these things, I came to meet it. Visiting, yeah, that's the word. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers. Please search it in somewhere else. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the world, children, to the third and what? Fourth generation. Of those who are, who hate me. Let's go to the next verse. But, but, you see that? But showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. Don't, we don't tell people. 
Exodus 24. 34, 34 7. 7. Okay, so I was right, 34. I, I've not used it for a long, long time, so it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> for many years. So they were teaching these things and putting people in bondage. Yeah. Now, when he was saying this, he wasn't talking to you. He's not talking to anybody who becomes born again today. He was addressing a people, a group of people, the Jews, the Israelites at that time. Because they were under the commandments. And lest I forget, I want to tell you that Jesus has become what? A curse. Why? To redeem us from what? The law, the curse of the law. So all these things, people don't teach it well. You don't, that's what I'm saying that when he redeemed you, when he ransomed you, when he took you out of the, uh, delivered you from the kingdom of darkness, nothing was left. Nothing was left. That includes forefathers, whatever they have done, ancestors, whatever they have done. Whatever they took you when you were a baby or you were in a womb, that was also taken care of. Everything and anything. Because Jesus became the ransom, the curse. According to Galatians 3.13 and 14. Why did he become the curse? That the blessing of Abraham, yeah. no curse. Yeah. That the blessing. So if you walk around, they take this nonsense, and you believe it, you walk around, you attract all this nonsense to yourself. Yeah. Okay. That's why I say these things with passion. Mm -hmm. Because I've been there before. Mm -hmm. In my ignorance days, in my joy days. Mm -hmm. Following, just following the crowd. Mm -hmm. But thank God for revelation. Yeah, thank, you, Jesus. thank God for revelation. Yeah. Hallelujah. So anybody who was even under this, you don't know me, uh, 5 or uh, what, uh, 7 or whatever, uh, Exodus 34, whatever, 6 or uh, 7 following, whatever happened there, when you come to Galatians 3, 13 and 14, let's have Galatians 3, 13 and 14. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are taken care of. You are exempt from every curse, you are exempt from anything chronic, anything uh, negative pattern cycle in your yes. so the way I deal with people now is different Amen. I won't sit to you down and give you all this lecture I'll tell you to have faith in Jesus Christ yes. when you have faith based on this yes. whatever it is you are exempt Amen. just like you are saved yes. when he saved you it's a whole kind of salvation yes. it includes what redemption and salvation or what safety from all the curses yes. do you get it he served you. You are no longer cursed. You are now blessed. Yeah. And nobody can curse you. If they start to curse you, their lips will begin to twist. And dance twist. Oh, how many write the days of twist? <laughs> you, you, you can't, you can't, you see, the blessing here, it says, God himself says, he will be an enemy to your enemy. And I address you to your address you. And he will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. That's how large, how serious your covering is. Christ has what? Redeemed us. Yeah. Remember, we read Colossians 1.13. He delivered us from Satan himself. His camp, his domain, his dominion, his authority over us. He couldn't do anything. He stood there defeated. And Jesus took us away. Amen. And now that we are in the kingdom of Jesus, Hallelujah. he's going to come take us. He dares not. So somebody will say, then how come I know this case and I know that case? This happened to sister so and so, and that happened to brother so and so. You know why? Because some people are stubborn. Instead of following Jesus the way, they follow other things or choose something else. Now, I will say this to you. I was in the faith, but I didn't walk 24-7 in the faith. My dumb days. I was doing stupid things that I knew the Bible was against, but I still did that. That's what I'm talking about. When you do these things, you open the door. You give the devil permission to attack you. He doesn't have uh, what, authority over you. He can't do anything. That's why he'll give you suggestions. If you take the suggestion, normally when you take his, uh, his suggestion, you realize that you're going to fear. And that is why these so-called fake blind prophets quack they prophesy fear. They only speak about death. You see, I'm not under the ministry of death. I'm under the ministry of life. 
So when I prophesy, I prophesy life to people, not death. The ministry of condemnation. I got to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, 3, 7 and 9. The Old Testament, the Mosaic, Judaism, is referred to as the ministry of what? Death, the ministry of condemnation. So a New Testament prophet, just like me, will not speak to condemn you, will not speak to kill you, will not speak to put fear in you. No. It doesn't happen. Watch out, Nathaniel. When he was, he was called, he came to Jesus. He said, oh, Nathaniel, a true Israelite in whom there's no God. Which in John chapter 1 is there. Like I said on Friday, Peter said all that he said. Oh, I'll die for you. He did it. He denied Jesus. Did Jesus say, you coward Peter? God doesn't address us that way. He didn't address Gideon by his weakness, by his mindset. But he said, mighty hero, mighty man of valor. valor. That is how God addresses us. So Peter, he went back to fishing. All that Jesus did, he trained his apostles. He took them all back to fishing. He was trying to collapse the ministry of Jesus. Jesus didn't come back and say, you, Peter. But he said, Peter, do you love me more than this? Feed my word. Sheep. God speaks to our purpose. So a New Testament prophet, present truth prophet, genuine prophet, when they see anything evil the devil is trying to do, they may not even tell you. They will just intercept it. Because one of the uh, assignments of prophet is to intercept that which is demonic, plotting of the enemy, you know, and works of evil and whatever. You know, it's, it's a ministry of prayer. It's not a ministry that you brag about. You do behind the scenes kind of stuff. I know one of the churches that are pastored. I started pastoring. I mean, having a, like a lead pastor over a church uh, around uh, uh, 90, 93, 93, 94. So I'm talking to you about a, a, an incident around 95. I was pastoring this church. The Lord revealed to me one of the members, what was going to happen, their, their child, their baby. And I prayed about it. And that was it. Look, the way God hears prayer, that, that's why I talk the way I talk, because I have rich experiences. Some of the things that people do is no prayer. I prayed about it. We were in the service. I didn't say anything. We were in the service. And then in the eye, out of the door, the, the mother, the father, they came running. Come and see a whole guy crying. Mother also crying. And they, they were holding their daughter like it was uh, like lifeless. He, the, he wasn't dead, but it was like nothing was going on. So they were terrified. They rushed. They broke into, no protocol, they broke into the service. They never were like, uh, I, said, I said, you guys relax. The Lord showed me this. He's taken care of. Everything is all right. I said, I prayed for them. They are okay. I said, your child is all right. You go to the hospital to go verify. That was the end of the case. Like I'm saying, I've seen cases where as I'm prophesying, healing takes place. You don't have to lay hands. You don't have to lay hands. I've seen this over and over and over over the years. Bodies are broken just like that. Yokes are destroyed just like that. Look, the power of God is effective. Amen. Yes. People don't know how to receive. Yes. That's the thing. When people come to me, I tell them, look, I don't have magic. I'll give you the word. If you believe it, it's going to work. Right. What I'm going to minister to people by way of prayer, I also tell them, I say, look, if you don't have faith in the word of God, I can lay hands, I can pray for you, it's not going to work. I pray for people over the phones. When it comes to conception, just over the phones, across oceans, they conceive. I mean, I've done this over and over. I know what I'm talking about. Some people take it like, oh, they are, they are so special. Look, every believer can do this. I'm not, I'm not coming against the fact that I have a grace as an officer or as a, what is it, a ministry gift. I'm not denying that. So the frequency and the experience of authority may be different. That's just that. Amen. So having become what? A curse for us, for this written. 
First is everyone who hangs on a tree. Look at the next verse. He did all this to take us from a place of curse, a place of doom, to a place of blessing, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. Do you get it? So we are a place where we are blessed. I used to walk around. I'm telling you. You know, I used to come. I would look at people, then I'm combing their background. I'm combing their background. When I met my wife, I have not seen her family, but then everything that was going on in the family, the Lord revealed to me, we took care of some of those things. If the Holy Ghost shows you something, that's fine. But I don't go digging. You understand what I'm saying? I'm talking about something that he showed me, but I wasn't digging. That what is there? I don't like I tell people, um, they say prophets, they sniff. I don't sniff. You see, I've become so sensitive to the Holy Spirit because of years of working with him, years of experience, maturity, knowing the word. It's just like a doctor. You go to a doctor and then you say, Doctor, doctor, hey, I'm feeling this, I'm feeling it. I think I have a flu. And then you go so so how are you feeling? What is going on? They say, Oh, it's not a flu, it's common cold. So the symptoms may be the same or like the flu, but it's not flu. How does the doctor know? Because they are trained. In the same way, when you grow in the things of the spirit, yeah. you see, it starts with the word. That's why I keep telling people, study the word. Amen. The word is your sure guide. Amen. So like I started, people say, show me the way. Guide me. You see, that time they didn't have the Bible. So stop reading the Psalms. If you really read it, just to know some stories. But don't go and read it for that to guide you. And so you say, show me the way, because they didn't even pray that way. And then this person to pray that way. Some people say, order my steps. So you to your order. No, it, they didn't have the Bible. Now the Bible is written, especially the New Testament. That's right. Whatever we need to do, whatever step we need to take, is now put there in the Bible. Yeah. If you read the Bible, you know what to do. If someone is getting on your nerves, the Bible tells you what to do. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. The Bible tells you how to deal with your enemy. So it's a, it's a short guy. People are too busy. They don't read the Bible. Then, that's what I want to talk to you about. I don't know if I can get there. The Holy Ghost is another guide. The Word of God is a guide. The Holy Ghost is a guide. The Bible says, Jesus said in John 14, 6 himself, said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So I have a problem. When people keep reading the Psalms, and they keep on reading about Elijah, and they keep reading about Moses. And I've been telling you, you are not a disciple of Moses. You are not a follower of Moses. You are a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. When you read the Old Testament, it doesn't relate to you. It's the New Testament that relates to you. Because the Old Testament was the shadow of the New Testament. It was a shadow of Jesus Christ who is going to show up. I'm not saying, hey. Let's go back to what we're reading in um, Romans 6, 14. So you understand. This is very simple. Alright? Yeah. Romans 6, 14. We are going to read together. So one, two, three, read. Is that Romans 6? Aha. Uh -huh. Romans 6, 14. I was just checking you out. <laughs> Let me take some water. Romans 6 14. Come on, tell the computer to hurry up. Is it there now? Okay, let's read. For sin shall not have dominion over you. So people who pray and say, Lord, I'm struggling. Have you heard that before? Believers, they say, I'm struggling with sin. I'm struggling with sin. You know why they struggle? They love the sin, they enjoy it. Certain things I was doing. When I was a teenager, even though I knew that it was in the word, don't do it because I enjoyed those things. I enjoyed it and I did it. But the moment I saw it, I accepted the word that I'm not doing it anymore. Nobody delivered me. I stopped. Because the power of the Holy Spirit engrossed me to enable me to do what is pleasing in the sight of God. God has already made you capable, able, to what? Do whatever he wants you to do. Amen. You don't need to fast for God to give you the power to obey him. Amen. To walk in faith, you have the ability. That's called grace. More so he has his Holy Spirit in you. Amen. He's wired you to be able to do everything Amen. that you can do Amen. and to succeed in this life. Amen. Nobody taught me these things. Amen. It came by revelation. Now, some of these things you will know until you begin to study the Greek. 
and the Hebrew and the Hebrew. I'm just kidding. <laughs> when you begin to study these things, it opens because at times you see the way the Bible was written, it was written in Aramaic or the Hebrew language, the Old Testament. And then we have uh, the New Testament in uh, what do you call it, Greek. So if you don't study well, you're going to make a lot of uh, mistakes. So you have to study. You see, what I'm doing, the Bible calls it ministry. Read Acts chapter 6, ministry of the word. That is why here I don't like saying sermon, sermon. I like to say word ministration. That's what Bible says. Ministry. This is a ministry. It has healing. I've said it over and over. I counsel people. People come to me for deliverance. They sit down. Where uh, was it? Breathing is seated. One guy came with a girlfriend. Can I paint this picture? Okay, it's not okay. To do like I'm putting them down. They sat there. But this somebody who has been in a relationship, divorce, another relationship, divorce, then now got hooked up with a guy who claims he's a Christian, he's a serious Christian, and whatever, whatever. Got her pregnant. They are not married. They are living together. Blah, blah. The trouble started to come. I don't know how somebody introduced them to this place. They came. You know what I'm talking about, Shaz, right? They sat there. Then as I was talking to them about the word, before I prayed, ministry has counseling side and it has prayer side. Yeah. See, the prayer can be deliverance, can be healing, whatever. Mm -hmm. So as I was talking to them, because I like what you know the word, then she started, mm, manifestation. Mm. Then she started, you know, uh, coil like a fetus. And then went to that position, then dropped from the chair. Then all of a sudden she started to take off her blouse. You know, I'm going to get the demon started speaking. You know, I have not even said come out. That's what I'm talking about. You see, some of these things that hypnotism and fake pastors that are out there, fake, fake prophets and whatever, that they are using spiritism, divination, sorcery, doing those things, that is not the power of God. You know how they do it most of the time. When I see them, it's so annoying. They prophesy to you. They say, yeah, sister, mm, sister, you stand very well. And in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing you. Then they walk around, ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Then they come around. Then they call around, uh, you brother here, you are fake. They are waiting for instructions. Then they say, I see an angel. The angel is a demon. A spirit that is talking to them. It's not the angel of God. But they always see an angel. I see an angel standing before you. One person I saw, by the time he finished prophesying, he emptied, I think, half of a bottle of oil. He says, you, you, sister, what I see in your life, then he dips inside the oil, then put in the, uh, the head of the person. Oh, this is nonsense. It's nonsense. So when I go out, I like to demonstrate. I like people to see the real thing. It's easy. Hallelujah. What was I? There's so much. <laughs> what was I? Anybody who can remind me? You see why you have to go and listen to it? What was I talking about? I was talking about something. The law, right? So, since I don't have dominion, then you can you don't have to pray for Jesus to deliver you, God to give me help to so overcome the sin. Decide that I choose the word, I'm not going to sin, and that's it. Then it says, For you are not under war, you are not under war, but under war. Let's look at the following uh, verse 15. What then shall we say? What, what then shall we say? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. Certainly not. So let's go back to the 14 in New Living Translation. So what are we under? What are we under? Did I say that? The Bible says it. Don't have a problem with me. We are not under law. So that's why I keep saying that. Somebody say, oh, so they don't read it. They don't do with the Old Testament. Oh, there are fine stories in the Old Testament. When you read it, and you read the New Testament, oh, your eyes will be open. Alright? So I'm not saying don't read the Old Testament. But I'm saying that you are not under the law. 
Because grace and truth came through Jesus Christ, Amen. not Moses. Amen. Moses, the prophets, the law, they pointed to Jesus. And we have tapes, I mean, whatever. So I'm not going to go. Let's read together. Read. Sin is no longer. Sin is no longer. Sin is no longer. For you are, you no longer uh, live under what? The requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. So now let's go to the uh, second, second uh, Peter 3.18. So some people, like I said, they are still followers of Moses and disciples of Moses. When you talk to them, listen to them, they are quoting the Psalms, they are quoting Deuteronomy, they are quoting and Joshua, even this, this but Joshua, do you know Joshua was a type of Jesus? Anyway. Read together, read. But grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus, the Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be what? The glory, both now, forever. Okay, what are we to grow in? The law. It says grow in the grace, because grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. According to First John, I mean, sorry, John chapter 1 verse 17 and 16 says, from his fullness, we have received grace upon grace. All right. He overthrew Moses. Moses is no longer the head of state. Jesus is. Is that simple? Is that clear? Yeah, that's it. So when one is saying we are under grace, we are under Jesus Christ. Who brought grace? According to first, according to uh, John chapter 1, verse 17, you know that. Let's read that. Some of you are looking at me like, uh, you know, what is this guy saying? Let's go there. John 1, 17. Read. For the law was given through what? Moses. But grace and truth came through Jesus. If God God wanted us to remain under the law. He wouldn't have allowed Jesus to come with grace and truth. So why do you want to still go under the law? When you go under the law, the Bible says you are the curse. If you want to live by the law. And if you break one, you are guilty of all. So why do people want to do that? They are legalistic. I'm going to touch something now. Then if I can move, I can move on. You see, I always, tell, I always say this. If people come to me and I tell them, oh, you yeah, have you are going through this, they talk to me about their problem. And I say, okay, you know, I'm not going to stretch you, just go fast, half a day. They say, oh, just half a day. Okay, that one they'll go and do it. It's not difficult. Works. Works. But if you tell them, just believe the word. Oh, Pastor, so you didn't even pray for me, so I just <laughs> believe the word. You see where the problem is? Because they've been trained for them to trust in fasting. But Romans 3, 24 says, God justified us freely. We didn't have to do anything. If you don't listen to some of the sermons I preached this month, go listen. Freely. It was Jesus' down payment. It was Jesus, his price, the ransom. That we are justified, not our works. So that's why I can tell you, you don't need to fast. Because if you don't fast, if you refuse to fast, you're already justified. If you don't fast, God will still listen to you. If you don't fast, God will still heal you. If you don't fast, God will still speak to you by His Spirit. If you don't fast, God will still lead you by His Holy Spirit. See how you are quiet. So what is this guy saying? I said it. I'm going to repeat it. You don't have to fast for God to have mercy on you. You don't have to fast for God to forgive your sins. You don't have to fast for God to lead you by His Spirit. You don't have to fast for God to heal you. You don't have to fast for you to be delivered. No. If it is so, Jesus would have echoed it. He would have said it. You people fast. So you'll be delivered. He did it. Why? Because if you believe his word, if you believe his word, everything has been given to us already free. Salvation itself is a free gift 
within salvation is your healing. Within salvation is your deliverance. It's your health. It's your guidance. It comes as a package. Just like I started talking about people who have been praying, you know, for favor, favor, favor. They were not taught that salvation includes the blessing we read about in uh, Galatians 3, 13, 14. That blessing is favor. The word grace in grace is favor. You are highly favored. But you see, when you are not taught, you don't know. So you think, oh, well, I don't have favor. If I can get some dangerous preferred reverend favor to lay hands on me, and then I'm going to get favor. No. If you're a child of God, you're highly favored. Amen. That's what it is. If you're not favored, what would you be doing in his family? It's only people who are favored, who are connected in union with Jesus Christ. You are, you are in union. Say this. Let's go to... Um, this by the by the way, John seventeen. I want you to see the union that uh, we have with the Lord. John seventeen is this seven, seventeen. Uh, we have such union. You talk about I in them. What? What is it? I in them, I in them, I am in the Father. Is it John? Yeah, I am in the Father. The Father is in me. You are in me. Somebody check that out for me. Anybody? 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 John 14, 11. Read that. Let's see. Believe me when I say I'm the Father. And the Father is in me. Uh -huh. Or at least believe. No, no, no. This is talking to uh, talking about I. John 17, I know it's there. 1721. 17, okay. That they may what? Be one. As you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they may also be one in us. That the world may know. Do you, do you see it? Yeah. Our union. The Holy Spirit is in you. Amen. You are in union with Jesus Christ. That's favor. You are joint up with Jesus Christ. That's favor. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. You are joint up with Jesus Christ. What else? There's no higher anything. Amen. The highest is joint up with Jesus. Amen. The most favored, favorable place. Joint up with Jesus. Amen. That's right. Do you get it? Yeah. That, that's it. So we are looking for something that doesn't exist. We are asking God to bless us when he has already blessed us. Up to now, getting people to stop saying it, but they are still saying it. The reason is saying, God bless you. God bless you. You are already blessed. It took me some time to change that. To be able to say, what people say to him, God bless you, I say you are blessed. It took me some time. We have to learn the Bible language, present truth, and say the same as God has said. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know habits die hard. <laughs> yeah. But when you become aware of it, gradually you can change it. Amen. Amen. God started by calling Abraham. Yeah. Abraham. Yeah. Father of many nations. That's right. And that's what we have to do. Yeah. Say what the Bible says. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me just close. I'll come back because I haven't finished. I can I can exhaust what I have to do. Look at John 16, 13. I have to give all this foundation before I can say these other things. I said the word of God is a guide. Everything you need to do, everything you need to know is in the word of God, present truth. I'm not talking about going to, you know, uh, what do you call it? Old Testament. It's in the New Testament. Somebody once came to me and said, oh, but if you throw away, he said we don't have to obey the Ten Commandments. I didn't say we don't have to obey the Ten Commandments. The Bible says, present truth says, we are not under the law. You don't have to obey the Ten Commandments. It didn't save you in the first place. Why should I go back in? Then the person said, oh, but, you know, we still have that. God, without that, how do we have moral laws? Look, do you guys read the Bible? You read the Bible. We have moral laws there. Present truth. New Testament. Hallelujah. Amen. A simple thing like uh, Jesus said in Matthew 5.28, if you look at the woman last week, 
You have already committed what adultery with a woman. Is that not immoral? Law? When you talk about First Corinthians chapter seven, there it says husbands and wives don't defraud each other. Don't go and sleep with somebody's wife and whatever. That. What is that? Is that not immoral? Law? So what are they talking about? They don't read. That's the problem. Everything is in there. So the word, present truth, is a guide. All right? And then the Holy Spirit is a guide. Let's read together. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will do what? Mm -hmm. Oh, the way you are speaking is like you're hungry. Are you hungry? Okay, so let's, let's read it well and then we'll go home and enjoy our lunch. Okay, read. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. Okay, so I'm going to give you a short kind of thing. I'll come back and teach. I want to take the Holy Spirit and teach it. This is what I'm saying, that a little here, a little there. Okay, so it says spirit of what? Truth. Okay, you know what truth is. Anything that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ uh, says, anything that has come from Jesus Christ, that truth. Then the word guide, that's how you study. So you look at this. When he is important, he is going to guide me. I need guidance in my life. I need direction. I need what? Leadership. So you look at this word. When it says guide, what does it mean? And who is the one going to guide you? That's why I'm saying that the Holy Spirit is the guide. Hallelujah. Amen. Hodegos. That is the Greek word. Guide. I'm talking about a noun. Hodegos. That is the noun. The uh, Greek word for what? Guide. Tall guide. Guide. The Holy Spirit is a guide. It means a conductor. He's a teacher. He's a leader. So most people don't know the Holy Spirit. Christians. That's why they struggle. They don't know the word to start with. How do they know the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit works with the word. He says what? I will take, when you read it, it takes from the word, which is Jesus, and gives to us. So if you don't know the word, how do you know the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. That's guide. Okay, so the word guide itself, the verb to guide, it means to show the way. Hodeg ego. Hodeg ego. That's the Greek word. It's to what? Guide. It's to show you the way. It's to teach. It's to lead. Then what I love is he will even tell you things to come. It means he will show. He will show you things to come. He will speak to you. Some people are apprehensive because of a situation. They don't know what is in tomorrow. They don't know what the situation is, what, the, what is going to happen, the result, whatever. Look, everything that you need to know is within you, the Holy Spirit. Fellowship with Him. Look, I've come this far, like I always say, not because I'm so smart. I learned many years ago, long ago, that the way to go is to befriend Him, to sit at His feet like Mary did, and to follow Him. That's it. And there are people here that they can testify of my ministry. They can testify. I give direction just like that because I hear from the Lord and I say it to you. Hallelujah. Amen. So what am I trying to tell you? The Holy Spirit as a conductor, leader, guide, he is also what? An intercessor. An intercessor. He's a consoler or comforter. He's your helper. I mean, you look at all that the Holy Spirit is. What help do you need now? Like I always tell people, the Holy Spirit is ever-present help. Ever-present help. Just like when anybody wakes up, you have oxygen, air. It's in the system already for you to breathe. 
You don't call on anybody to supply. You don't call on God to bring you oxygen supply, whatever. It's already in there. The same way strength to be who you are, who you ought to be, what you ought to do is already within you by way of the Holy Spirit. The guidance, the leading, everything is in there. We don't know how to listen. And people here can testify. Some of the folks when we're training them, you call them and say, well, I don't hear anything. God speaks all the time. That's why I like saying it. When I leave you on the white throne, he speaks. You see, we have been taught religiously you have to fast to clean cobwebs from your ears so God will speak to you. It's a lie. God is not waiting for you to fast before he speaks to you. He's not. And I'm challenging some of these things that people have said. That's why when I go out, I like to demonstrate it. It's not really so. It's about your sensitivity to his word and to the Holy Spirit. Now I'm going to end on this note because Amen. I haven't finished. I'll come back and continue. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'll challenge you guys uh, with the words in Galatians chapter uh, 5, verse 1 and 13. Stand firm with the liberty. Well, with Jesus, the anointed one has made you free. And do not be again entangled with the yoke of bondage, but by love serve one another. Amen. Hallelujah. Waiting for the camera. <laughs> <laughs>